G'day Smoking Dagger fans, today we're doing a portable barbecue. You can pick this sucker up from Kmart in Australia here, just over $10. Some of the features include ideal for picnics, one time use, ready in just five minutes, portable, easy to construct, and we're gonna put it to the test today with some lovely sizzle steak that we have. Stay tuned. All right, so with anything like this, I'm gonna pick out some of my favorite disclaimers in the warning and feed them back to you. So my first one, this item is combustible. Always a great idea for the barbecue that you're lighting to be combustible. Really makes sense. Uh, what else have we got here? Do not cook before the dual coating of ash. So I'm gonna assume this is near poisonous if you cook on it before that. So this single use barbecue has to be installed on a secure level base prior to use. The picture is uh, ideal for picnics, hiking, camping. How many secure stable bases are you gonna have when you're hiking, you f***ing idiots? Why don't you tell them what you really think, Tom? <laughs> This already looks insanely complex. We have the user manual with quite a few instruction steps. Pass this to Tom, he's gonna to be the adjudicator for this build. All right, site supervisor, what do we do next? First things first, you're gonna grab those poles and shove them in the holes. I have some experience with this job. Never this many holes though. They're definitely this many poles. Some feedback I'd say is these bamboo sticks actually feel quite well made. Like they could have skimped out. This could have even been cardboard, I guess. Probably would have burned. Does it mention anywhere that we should be soaking these bamboo sticks? It does not. All right, let's stick to the instructions. Interesting though, if I was cooking this at home and worried about fire safety, I'd probably want to keep these bamboo skewers a little bit wet to avoid them catching, but the engineers that came up probably know what they're doing. That's one side done. This is hard work. I've never had to build my barbecue before I used it before. I would say if you were having a few beers on your picnic and you're expecting to then make this, the mileage would probably vary. I could see this being half done with maybe three quarters of the sticks in. You know, a bit of the she'll be right moment. All right. How's that looking, boss? You've successfully completed step one. Nice. I would like to point out on the user manual, step is spelt S-E-T-P, not S-T-E-P. Thanks, Kmart. Setup. Next setup. <laughs> we're going to take apart the dashed lines on both sides and we're going to take the piece of paper out of the middle and use it as a fan for step five. Right, okay, that sounds complicated. Talk us through again. What dashed lines are we talking about? Is that this box? Is that dashed lines in the outside? Do you see dashed lines? Oh, oh, yes, there are dashed lines. We've located the dashed lines. No, you do need to remove the plastic before being able to visually see the dashed lines. So it's clear on camera here. This actually ships with charcoal, believe it or not and what looks like a little bit of polystyrene slash rock or stone. I'm not actually sure what that is, but that must be the heat insulator so that the cardboard box doesn't get lit. But this barbecue will be lit. Wait a second, is it referring to that? I almost just threw this out. I thought this was packaging, but this could be a part of the barbecue. Oh. The brazier goes into the base. Separate three. Oh, uh, sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. I need to take some off here. That's gotta be this. It's asking us to pop this out. To be... I may have veered off the instructions a bit here, guys, but I'm pretty sure this is the only thing that would be big enough to constitute a fan. Just remember, if you ever need uh, adult help, go find one. Clearly we're children. It's not bad. This will be Tom's only fans. Subscribe. Insert the brazier. Ah, oh, so there are, there are a secondary set of dotted lines here that need to be popped out, and this must be where the insertion happened. So what I'm doing now is removing these two, which must be the insertion tabs from the bottom of the, what they're calling the brazier, which is, oh. So this brazier has now got two little tabs that come out there, and they're gonna slot right into this little table that we have. Yes. Great, all right, what's the next uh, step there? All right, step four, I'm gonna light up the row one plus three or two plus four by blow lighter. Oh yeah. So this assumes you have a blow lighter. People would have one laying around. But luckily, we cook a lot of barbecue, so we got a blow lighter. Let's give it a go. Should I read the additional steps or are we just going for it? Final assembly is last step. Okay. If this doesn't go to plan, at least I can uh, document this for my home insurance claim. Because all I've done is follow Kmart's instructions. Put down a bit of heat. Yeah, that's why that's why you're aiming it at me. Yeah. This is surprisingly easy. In fact, I'd say this is probably easier to light than my Kamado was, which makes me think there is a lot of chemicals going on right now. I can hear a lot of cracking, a lot of popping, and Tom's face is definitely starting to, oh, that smell, that's bad. All right, 
So you made it this far into the video. We've successfully lit this brazier and it's providing some of the worst smoke that I've smelt in quite some time. It's sort of like when you go to your uncle's house for a backyard barbecue and the guy clearly has no idea what he's doing with the barbecue and he just chucks a whole bunch of <laughs> gasoline on the briquettes to get them going. This is pretty much equivalent of that, but table format. What are your thoughts, Tom? Yeah, not really looking forward to eating anything off this, but let's give it a go. Wicked, what's the next step? We're gonna chuck that on top, that's the final assembly. So we can see there's uh, little cutout tabs on either side of the bridge here. That's where these uh, cardboard tabs are gonna slid into. It's interesting how they would expect you to do this without any heat proof equipment. More interesting that we haven't even put on our own heat proof equipment. We wanna give you guys, the viewers, the realistic experience of assembling one of your own portable temporary barbecues. Wicked. And there you have it guys. Not sure if that was five minutes, we've successfully assembled the Anko Kmart Portable Barbecue. It's working! It's working! That's hot. A little bit dry, lacking a little bit of that good charcoal flavor you normally get, but in a pinch, edible. So that was the Anko portable barbecue from Kmart. Look, some pretty interesting experiences, not gonna lie. Not sure I'd rush to go pull one off the shelf again, but look, there's still one feature I'm dying to try out and how maybe it could be the best thing about it. <laughs> Unintentionally cooking this steak. Oh, Garth, he coded, he got the steak. <laughs> 